Grace to you, children of the living God. Uh, this is the fourth video I'll do for YouTube, and it's a little different. Most of them have been prophetic in nature. I think that you're going to get something from this. So let's pray first. Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for being such a wonderful living God. And God, you're just too good for us to believe that you did so much for us as you have done. And Lord, we thank you that you documented everything you've done for us in the past and what you'll do for us in the future through your word, the Bible. We give you all the glory and all the praise. Thank you that Jesus is the word. Amen. So the title of today's uh, little message is, Why Have a Physical, Tangible Bible? A real Bible. One you can pick up. One you can hold. One you can flip through. One you can write on. One you can highlight. One that you can track your development as, as a baby Christian on to the future. One you can take notes in and give references to, you can refer to later and help find other people the same scripture that you referred to and learned from years and years ago. I actually keep mine as a historical, um, oh, you know, record of, of my walk and, you know, some of the miracles God did in my life, which are absolutely fantastic. And so if I ever have any kind of a question of a faith, I just look back to what he did for me in the past and it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I, you know, I give God all the praise for, for bringing me out of a life of sin and, you know, how wonderful and blessed I am to this day. So, you know, let's start this way. Welcome to the new technological age. <laughs> so I'm kind of joking, but, you know, the truth of the matter is, you know, everybody's on their phone. Everybody uses the Internet. And I think you lose touch with something by just being on those words, on those screens. And, you know, the sad thing you'll see, and I'm sure from time to time, is you go to a restaurant and there's a young couple, handsome couple, gorgeous girl, handsome guy, in their 20s. You'd think that's all they could do is glare in each other's eyes, you know, and never look away. What are they doing? They're on each of their own phone texting, Facebooking, whatever the heck they're doing. You know, they're losing touch with human you know, intimacy, you know? So I want you to be intimate with this Bible. That's what I want. So, you know, the iPads are good and, you know, your phone for references, and I use it as a tool as well, but, but I really believe to have, a, again, a connection to a real physical thing makes a big difference, and that's what I'm encouraging you to do. It's old school. So, you know, this book isn't going anywhere. The internet, who knows? Do you know what an e EMP is? Electri electric magnetic pulse bomb? That could just wipe out the internet and everything that's computerized from here to eternity, and history's gone, you know? But if you have physical books, if you have physical photographs, it's real. Um, I'm a photographer, by the way, uh, for many years, and back in the day, we, you know, the kids don't even know this, but we used to take photos on negatives, which were then made into prints. Well, if you worked in a news source or for a newspaper, what would happen is, you know, the photographer would take his pictures on the day and then he would develop the negatives and then he would put them in an organized fashion, dating them, etc. And you'd always have a physical record of what it was you did. So hypothetically, you know, one person who's just in the background, you know, who was an aide to a congressman, hypothetically, and all of a sudden something happens to that person big, you know, and you say, hey, remember that guy? Uh, yeah, he was hanging around and blah, 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 blah. Do we have any pictures of him? Well, try to find it in the digital age. I mean, what format? Um, what connection? What what? I mean, it's next to impossible, but when you have those physical negatives, you can actually look to, and you can find it because you say, oh, yes, I remember, you know, the congressman spoke, you know, August uh, 19th, uh, 1983, and his aide was an aide back then. Let's look through those pictures and see what we come up with. And sure enough, there he was in the background. So then you can at least have a reference, a photo referenced when you do a story or talk about that particular person. So anyway... Um, you know, another thing that I really feel kind of upset about a little bit is this, that when you go to church, you know, in this modern day age, age maybe 20% of the people carry a Bible with them to church. You know, uh, the scripture verses are on the screens, and that's convenient. And I'm sure the pastors have Bibles at home that they mark up and write in, but yet they might have an iPad while they're, you know, giving their message or their service. And, you know, that basically um, 
you know, encourages people to get into the electronic age and, and, you know, and books are passed away. I mean, I hate to tell you, but I remember when Hitler was burning all the books and Bibles like crazy way back when, you know, the physical record is a good thing. So again, I use my phone. I don't have an iPad. Many pastors do. But, you know, encourage your congregations to actually have a real Bible. I mean, I don't know if you remember, but back in the day, Joel Osteen used to hold up his Bible. And uh, I kind of wrote what he said. He goes, I believe what it is. You know, I am what it says. And I can do what it says, you know. And everybody, I mean, I don't know, two-thirds of the whole big monster church held up a Bible. I mean, I thought it was a pretty good thing. Nowadays, <laughs> I don't know uh, how many people still have a Bible. You know, and there used to be also another tradition. Um, people used to have a family Bible. They would write in it, you know, when so-and-so was born, maybe the, uh, the, the weight of the baby, et cetera, et cetera. And that could be a legacy passed down from generation to generation. Um, I hope this Bible uh, might, in fact, act as a legacy, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that maybe my wife or my daughter would read from it later and see what I was thinking when I was thinking way back when, and I'm sure they'd be enlightened by it. And then, of course, you know, if you had your Bible, whether it be a son or, or a husband or whatever, the same would hold true. Uh, the bottom line is we got to study the Bible and get closer to God. So uh, I have a few scripture verses here I want to read. Um, you'll notice I'm going to read from the Bible. A lot of times I use a phone, but today I'm going to deliberately stick to this physical, tangible Bible. So the first one is John 1, 14. And it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Good scripture verse. Uh, let's go now to number two. Number two is Isaiah 40, verse 8. And it states, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Another verse, Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Hebrews. 10, 7. Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will. Now we're moving on to 2 Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now on to James 1.22. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now, this is good. Because when you see those scripture verses on the screen and who's ever teaching is referring to them, you know, it's always a good idea to see the scripture verses before it and after it to give it a better context, a better meaning, you know, to set the, the tone as to where they were, what they were thinking, what they were doing. And I believe it gives a whole better, stronger meaning, you know, and you'll better understand it. And remember that scripture verse, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. So that's referring to Jesus. So, I mean, I don't, you can't get any better than that in terms of emphasizing the importance of the word of God. So, and, and you know, the more senses you use for anything, it's, it's better learning. So you see it, you feel it, you touch it, you hear it if you, if it's read aloud, and as opposed to just you know, seeing it. So to get a better imprint in your body to make it stick, I mean, that's the key, right? And uh, also, again, referring back to highlighting, 
you know, and even arrows, I mean, and stars. I mean, if you saw this thing the way I marked my Bible up, I mean, you know, whatever. It's just, it's just great. And I know, like, if I'm talking to somebody, hey, you know, remember what it said, you know, in, um, you know, James, whatever the verse, you know, that it was this, that, this. And sure enough, there's this arrow that refers to another passage that I can then go to to give better meaning to what it was I was talking to him about. So, and so let's talk briefly about highlighting. You know, this is going to be your Bible. You should have one, and you can do whatever you want with it. So this is kind of weird, but I remember a, a, a prophecy Bible uh, Grant Jeffries had offered, and it was color-coded, and it was great, a great learning tool. So, like, hypothetically, let's say yellow highlights might mean prophetic scriptures. Red might mean redemptive scriptures. Um, green might be something that develops your Christian character that makes you a better person. You know, you can devise whatever system it is that you like. You know, again, it's your Bible. You do what you want. It's your own way of communicating to yourself and to others, you know, given the opportunity to teach and share. And I really truly believe that everybody should be willing and able to share the gospel especially in the end times which we're in, because people are going to be looking around saying, what the heck's going on? Hey, you're a Christian. Do you know anything about this, what's going on? And you should have answers. Yeah, you should be totally confident in knowing about salvation and what it is that God's done and what he's going to do. And, you know, the beauty of Bible prophecy is we win in the end. You know, you can get a little uh, nervous about the situation of what's going on, but... Uh, you know, we win in the end. So, so really, it's all good. So now I'm going to go to another scripture verse. It's 2 Corinthians 3, verse 1 and 2. It says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. So basically what he's saying is, you know, you got to go on to higher levels um, as you teach and learn. And, it, and the beauty of having a physical Bible is you can refer to, I remember when, way back when I didn't know this, I didn't know that. And then of course, you know, the scripture verse hearing and hearing the word of God. You know, you hear it with your ears, but you hear it with your spirit as well. And I really believe that Something that's tangible, that's physical, just makes a stronger impact. And that's what I'm recommending. If you don't have a Bible, you get a, better get one. And, you know, digital is fleeting. Physical is real. And uh, here's another thing that um, I want to say. You know, I have a Bible. It's a study Bible. So, I mean, not everybody has a study Bible. I have a little Bible I travel with. It's not as heavy, not as big. I mean, this thing's a little bit of a monster, but it's got all my notes and stuff in it. It's my most prized possession, by the way. My most prized possession. Now, you know, a study Bible, again, you can get all this stuff from the internet, but it's good to have it. You know, what if you have no signal? What if you're in Africa and there's no internet? I mean, I go, I travel like that, so it's important to have references. So, you know, a study Bible has a lot of things. It's a valuable tool. It has definitions. It has references. It has an index. It has a concordance. And, you know, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, it's absolutely great. Now, I'm, I'm older, and it doesn't matter. I think younger people should take advantage of the same fantastic tool, a study Bible. And so let me also pass on this, just to give you an impression as to physical is better. <laughs> you know, the Pentateuch, which is only the first five books of the Bible, was always written on scrolls by hand. And you can go and you can buy an old refurbished Pentateuch as a scroll. And if it's in relatively good condition, guess what you might pay for that thing? $28,000. That's only the first five books of the Bible. Now, if I gave that to you on a digital file, what do you think that's worth? Next to nothing. <laughs> so maybe think of that too. So um, when the Jews pull out the, uh, the, the scroll, the Pentateuch from the front of where the synagogue is, and you'll remember how that reverently they carry that thing and how they gently take off the cover. And, you know, I'm just trying to give you visual images. So anyway, if you have a Bible, write in it, highlight it, do whatever it is to 
make it better and more personal to you and your life and your spiritual walk. And if you don't have a Bible, get one. God bless you. See you on the next one.